When I handle cases, God is always on the throne. In the case of Nabikano, God has taken over the entire proceedings. There's no question about that. You all saw it in court today. The truth is that the lower court tried in striking out eight out of the 15 amended count charge. But the lower court fell far short in not striking out the remaining seven which have no business being in the charge sheet. All the seven remaining counts are watery, prima facie, they are dead on arrival, and they were dead on arrival, as I just as I, I, as I termed them, as dead as Dudu. But instead of the lower court striking out the entire 50 count charge and allowing Namdi Kanuto to go home a free man after the long walk, like Nelson Mandela, long walk to freedom. The lower court retained seven of the counts. And we are here to say, Intermediate Court, Court of Appeal, strike out these remaining seven counts. Because the lower court never calmly looked at the documentary evidence we placed before it. The respondent, the federal government, the DSS, they never responded to the critical issues we raised that Inam the Kanu was forcefully abducted in Kenya and tortured and forcefully renditioned to Nigeria on the 27th of June 2021 against the provisions of the Terrorism Prevention Act under which he has been charged, against the provisions of the Extradition Act, against the provisions of the African Charter of Human and People's uh, Ratification Act, Rights Act. And the law is that when you want to take a person from another country like Namdi Kano from okay. Kenya, you have to go through a certain extradition process. If you don't, the detaining authority, that is Kenya, have to first give you consent or permission that you can take away this subject from our jurisdiction. Kenya did not do that. In fact, Kenya said, we never told them to take Nandi Kano away from here. So what the government did was to apply brute force, Vietnamese, in a most savage manner, by capturing Nambi Kano the same way the federal government had done against Omaru Diko, who was Shagari's minister. And we have cited several cases to the, before the court in other jurisdictions to show that a person you have brought in forcefully cannot stand trial on counts that were existing before you brought him back, which did not amount to the offense you are now saying he has committed. And by the way, the Federal High Court Act, the Administration of Criminal Justice Act, and Supreme Court and Court of Appeal decisions say when you are charging a person for a criminal offense, you must state with particulars the place where he allegedly committed the offense, the time, the venue. But in this case, all the remaining several counts, they are saying, six of them, that Inabdi Kano made certain broadcast. Broadcast from where? From the spirit world, you did not tell us. From ghost land, you did not tell us. And you know what they did? That was because in our earlier objection to the first charge, where they said he made the broadcast from the United Kingdom, they tried to run away from that.
by now saying he made the broadcast without stating where he made the broadcast from. And the law is that you cannot charge a person in such a vague and evasive manner. The Federal High Court does not have global jurisdiction over crimes allegedly committed in other parts of Nigeria. The only count that they mentioned a venue was one of the counts where he, where he was accused of importing a transmitter and that it was accosted at Obolo Isuzo in the local government area of Anambra State. Of course, here the local government area of Anambra State is not within the jurisdiction of the Federal High Court such as to preside over the matter against Inamdekanu in that respect. There is another point also, which is that he is being tried for allegedly <coughs> committing these acts as a member or leader of IPOP. Because according to the federal government, IPOP has been banned or proscribed. Meanwhile, we have since filed an appeal against this prescription. And the appeal is pending, is extant, before the same court at the Court of Appeal. And you cannot begin to carry out a charge against a person on, based on a foundation which we are telling the Court of Appeal to remove. The question you should ask yourself is simple. We are in Namdekano to be tried and convicted, God forbid. And the Court of Appeal later finds out or discovers that IPOP was illegally and unlawfully and wrongfully proscribed. What do you do about that? So we are saying they should, the law is that they should, have, they should wait under the doctrine of least pendant. They should wait first for this court to determine the proscription of IPOP, whether it was lawful or illegal. And they are jumping the gun. So all in all, Nabikano has no case against him at all. He is being kept in detention by the same DSS who investigated him, the same DSS who arrested him, the same DSS is detaining him, the same DSS is still keeping him in custody, the same DSS through the federal government is also prescribing, I mean, uh, prosecuting him. So where is the justice? when you are the investigator, the arrestor, the accuser, and the prosecutor. Where is the justice? Justice is not only for the government, it is also for citizens like Namdekano. Namdekano has not done anything wrong. And we have been able to demonstrate before in our brief, before the Court of Appeal, as we did before the lower court, that Namdekano never jumped bail. You jump bail when you voluntarily escape from trial and refuse to attend trial. But we all saw that on the 16th of September, 2017, Nnamdi Kanu was with his late father, Eze Kanu, in his ancestral home at Inumwahia, Afarauku, Ibeko, Umwahia, Abia State, when the federal government, using the army through Operation Python, invaded the home and killed in cold blood 28 unarmed Nigerians. Now the Kano managed to escape by providence. No. Are you saying that he should have waited for you to kill him when every evidence pointed to the fact that he was to be eliminated? And when he escaped to Israel, he quickly deposed to an affidavit giving circumstances under which he came. So he never jumped bail. This thing must be clear to the public that Nam the Kano was enjoying his bail from 2015. He never jumped bail for one day until they forced him to flee. So by the grace of God, this is a case where the justice of the matter points in the direction that the remaining seven counts charge still pending against Nam the Kano before the lower court. Joseph Bintanyako will be struck out by this 
Court of Appeal. And now the canon, after the long walk, we walk into freedom. I will become a free man. And by the way, it is even advisable that he walks into freedom. Because as we speak today, I learned the entire Southeast is in a lockdown. Namdikano has therefore become a metaphor for the struggle of a people, the Indigo race, who are saying, according to them, all that their name of Biafra give us self-determination. Self-determination is allowed by all international conventions, even by the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights and United Nations Conventions, all the various conventions. Self-determination is allowed. And he is saying, let my people, and he never did that violently. We all saw that, that I poor people were always on the street marching, blowing whistle, wearing beret. They never killed anybody until the government itself introduced violence. Today, for example, I learned the South is, is locked down. Because the federal government still want that. The judiciary want that. Let us all have peace and amity. Because this country is one and it belongs to all of us. So I, I believe, by the grace of God, that Nabi Kano will be set free by this God of appeal. Thank you.